E-L-E-C-T-R-I-C-I-T-Y. That's right, we're talking about electricity today. But what is electricity? I mean, we use it all day, every day. So what is it and how does it work? Electricity is a form of energy resulting from charged particles. These charged particles are called electrons. Electrons can either become charged naturally, like static when you rub a balloon on your head. Static electricity is when electrons hop back and forth to make an electric force. Or it can be man-made and harnessed, like the electricity that powers your house. Electrons can either be released in a discharge, like shocking your friends and lightning, which are both static electricity, or it can be built up or charged and stored for later. This is where most of the man-made electricity you use comes from. Big generators or motors charge huge amount of particles in a power plant. We can then use batteries to store all of this electrical energy. The electrical charge of energy moves in currents. Objects can either allow the current to travel through it or prevent the current from moving through. If a material allows the current to travel, it is called a conductor. Conductors are generally made out of metals like silver, gold, copper, and steel, but can also be other things like graphite, salt water, and acidic fruit juices. That's why you can use a lemon to create a battery for your phone. Objects that prevent electrical current are called insulators. These include rubber, oil, glass, and dry wood. To harness electricity, you can use conductors to create a one-way path for the current to flow through. And if you set up your path in a loop, you can make what's called a circuit. A circuit is just a loop of conductors, usually wires, that allows electricity to power a device. Let's look at a really simple circuit. We have a battery full of electrical charge, and now we can use wires to move that electrical energy away from the battery to a device that needs energy. This could be a light, a bell, a buzzer, or even a heater. But let's use the light bulb. So we attach our device to the wire, and now we have to make a loop for the current to travel back to the battery. Now this circuit's gonna turn on our light, but you probably wanna turn this light off again. So let's add a switch. The switch can now either be closed, which means the loop is completed, or open meaning there's a gap in the current which turns off our light. If you look at some electrical switches, you might notice a line for on or closed and a circle or O for open or off. Now we can open and close our circuit. But a one light bulb circuit is kind of boring, so let's add some pizzazz. I want to use multicolored light bulbs like holiday lights. Now what we've made is a type of circuit called a series. This type of circuit is really easy to make, but it has one major downfall. If even one light bulb goes out, the circuit is disrupted, the circuit opens, and all of the bulbs go out. Womp womp. To avoid this, we can build our circuit in parallel. That means that we create an additional loop of wires parallel to our original setup to allow the electricity to branch off and continue in multiple pathways. This lets us still create a closed loop even if one or several lights go out. Let's take a look at a question. 